Welcome to the inauguration of Dr. Gregory W. Fowler, 7th President of University of Maryland Global Campus. The inaugural procession will begin with presidents of universities in the order of their founding, followed by the global delegates of University of Maryland Global Campus, representing students, staff, alumni, and faculty worldwide. They will be followed by speakers in the program, including Chair of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents and UMGC graduate Linda Gooden, Chancellor J. Perman, M.D., UMGC Chief Academic Officer Blakely Palmietto carrying the University Mace, and the seventh president of University of Maryland Global Campus, Dr. Gregory W. Fowler. Will members of the audience please rise? Please remain standing for our national anthem performed by the Prelude Brass Quintet. And now, welcome our Masters of Ceremonies, 
Ms. Nikki Sandoval, UMGC Associate Vice President for Institutional Advancement, and Dr. Blair Hayes, UMGC Ombudsman, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer. Seated. Welcome. Greetings to Dr. Fowler and members of his family, our distinguished guests, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends here in Adelphi, Maryland, and to those joining online from around the world. Today is truly special. This ceremony is an inflection point and an exclamation point in the 75-year history of University of Maryland Global Campus. A new president now leads the university forward in fulfillment of its historic mission. Nikki and I are proud to be a part of the ceremony and we are delighted that you are here with us today. So let's get things started. Nikki? Thank you, Blair. Our opening speaker today has a long and distinguished history of achievement in the state of Maryland and with our university. He is the former president of Verizon for Maryland and the District of Columbia. He served as a chairman of MedStar Health, the largest not-for-profit healthcare system in the region. He chaired the board of Maryland Chamber of Commerce, and he has served as a trusted and respected advisor and board leader here at UMGC, helping to shape the future of our university. In 2006, he was also awarded an honorary doctorate of public service. Please join me in welcoming the honorary chair of the Presidential Inauguration Committee, William R. Roberts. Thank you, Nikki. And friends, welcome to the inauguration of Gregory W. Fowler as the seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. I am so very pleased to be here today as we mark the beginning of a new and exciting chapter for UMGC. For 75 years, this remarkable institution has served as Maryland's open university focused on educational needs of adults in the workforce and in the military, changing lives, strengthening communities here in Maryland, across the United States, and the world. UMGC is the alma mater of notable American heroes, including Ambassador Edward J. Perkins, the first black U.S. ambassador to apartheid South Africa, and the U.S. Army General John W. Vesey, Jr., an enlisted man who rose to the rank of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. A more recent example is UMGC alumnus Florent Groberg, who received the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest military honor from President Barack Obama in 2015. It was for acts of valor above and beyond the call of duty. Captain Groberg suffered serious injuries when he tackled a suicide bomber in Afghanistan, and while recovering and contemplating his future, he enrolled at UMGC and earned his Master of Science in Management with a specialization in intelligence management. We are honored today to share greetings from the U.S. Army Captain and proud UMGC alumnus, Florent Groberg. Thanks, Bill. I am honored and humbled to be a part of this day with everyone here to commemorate UMGC's 75th anniversary, and most importantly, the inauguration of our seventh president, Greg Fowler. I remember my time as a student here at the university and the people that I met, my classmates, my peers, the teachers that invested so much time in my studies and my learning, but most importantly, the network that I built. Today, I am proud. I am proud to say that I am a member of this family, the UMGC family. Most importantly, I'm excited for the future of the university and its future students and our network. Thanks. Thank you so much, Captain Groberg, for your service to our country and for joining us here this morning. You are indeed an inspiration, an outstanding example of courage, perseverance, and commitment 
to so many UMGC students who triumph over adversity in pursuit of their dream. Today's UMGC's mission is more relevant than ever. The workers, uh, the demand for skilled workers and principled leadership and leaders have never been greater, nor is the need for a visionary leader to guide the university in a time of dramatic change in higher education. Today, now I have to, for a minute, uh, ad lib and editorialize. <laughs> I had the distinct honor and pleasure to serve on the search committee that ultimately selected Dr. Fowler. I knew early on in this process that he was very special. I searched through and read through over about 70, 75 resumes and CVs, and this one stood out. It stood out. He stood out as a leader, a visionary, and it just seemed to me that he was the right, the right person to lead this great university. Now, we are fortunate to have that leader in Greg Fowler, whose experience and vision will enable this fine university to take us to the levels that we need to need to lead and reach and change the world in positive ways for generations to come. Now, I thank all of you for your support and for sharing this special day with Dr. Fowler, his family, our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and for all of those who believe in the power of education to transform lives. Thank you. On behalf of our UMGC family, a heartfelt thanks to you, Bill, for your service and leadership to our university. Thank you. We turn now to a noble tradition in inauguration ceremonies. It's the sharing of greetings and good wishes of dignitaries, leaders, friends, and university community members. We are honored that Maryland Governor Larry Hogan has signed a proclamation declaring March 10th a special day honoring the inauguration, which is a cornerstone to our UMG, UMGC's 75th anniversary. The Maryland General Assembly has also approved a joint resolution commemorating this day today. These wonderful attributes are also on display here in Maryland, in Adelphi. So now, let us hear from elected officials from the state of Maryland and one from New Hampshire, beginning with remarks from Governor Larry Hogan. Dr. Fowler, congratulations on your installation as the seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. For 75 years, UMGC has served the people of Maryland and its community with a mission of bringing the dream of higher education within reach to tens of thousands of students. And with President Fowler at the helm, I have no doubt that UMGC will continue to be a shining example of all that Maryland's world-class university system has to offer. Congratulations, and I wish you all the best. Hi, I'm Chris Van Hollen, and honored to represent the great state of Maryland in the United States Senate. We in Maryland are very proud of the University of Maryland Global Campus and thrilled to have Dr. Gregory W. Fowler now leading the way. Dr. Fowler, I know you have already steered UMGC with distinction and skill throughout your first full year as president. Congratulations now on your official inauguration. You've dedicated your career to improving lives through education, and we're glad you're bringing that experience and dedication here to Maryland. I look forward to working with you and the entire UMGC family to keep open the doors of opportunity for learners of all ages and all backgrounds. Congratulations, Mr. President. Hello, this is Congressman Steny Hoyer. Dr. Fowler, congratulations on being inaugurated as the seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. 
I am honored to join and officially welcome you to Maryland and to the University of Maryland family. We are all very excited to see you bring your experience and innovative thinking to UMGC to help its diverse and motivated students pursue their careers and their dreams. I look forward to working with you to keep making UMGC the best it can be in delivering on its mission of higher education and opportunity. Again, congratulations. Hi, I'm Congressman Kwaisi Mfume, and I am very happy to offer my congratulations to you, Dr. Greg Fowler, as the new president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. The students you serve will benefit most from your breadth and depth of experience in continuing education. Keeping UMGC as a vibrant and impactful institution in the state where it resides is no small task. So like others, I look forward to you continuing to meet the challenges of a remote learning environment as well as the hybrid nature of adult education in the 21st century. Congratulations on your investiture as the seventh president of UMGC, an important part of Maryland's higher education community, and I wish you every success. Hi, Greg, I hope you're doing well and congratulations on the position. I'm sure great things are in store. Well, we're all really sad to see you trade in the Granite State for the Old Line State. We're pleased to see you continue your work in higher education, which is ensuring that generations have the tools and knowledge to excel and thrive. At Southern New Hampshire University, you helped really lead the way in creating modern education structures that are continuing to meet the needs of students of all backgrounds and to help develop and grow the workforce that we need throughout our country. I know that you'll bring that experience and expertise to your role as president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. And I really look forward to continuing to see the good work that you do. Congratulations and take care. We are so Prince George's proud to welcome Dr. Gregory Fowler to Prince George's County and congratulate him on his appointment as the seventh president of University of Maryland Global Campus. I've been saying that greatness grows in Prince George's County. And that certainly includes the amazing and diverse talent we continue to see at UMGC. President Fowler, I look forward to getting to know you and working together to ensure greatness continues to grow and thrive at UMGC and in Prince George's County for years to come. And now I have the pleasure of introducing an inspiring and accomplished leader in higher education who currently serves as the chair of the USM Council of University System Presidents. Please welcome the 10th president of Bowie State University, Dr. Amita Bro. <laughs> Thank you and good morning everyone. What a glorious day this is. Dr. Fowler, I am so honored to offer greetings and congratulations to you and the campus of UMGC on behalf of Maryland's 12 institutions and three regional higher ed centers. I know I speak for all of my colleagues when I say we look forward to working with you as you look to continue the institution's mission to transform the lives of adult learners. And together, we will uphold the mission of the University System of Maryland to improve the quality of life in Maryland through affordable, high-quality educational opportunities, groundbreaking research innovation and entrepreneurship, and economic growth and workforce development. Dr. Fowler, you bring impressive, impressive credentials, we all know that, to UMGC and your strategic and creative thinking skills have already contributed greatly to the fabric of UMGC. Your work in developing innovative learning experiences for adult and non-traditional populations is recognized around the world. Founder and President Emerita of the Children's Defense Fund, Marion Wright Edelman, once said, education is for improving the lives of others and for leaving your community and world better then you found it. Dr. Fowler, you have taken the power of education to change the trajectory of lives and impact communities. May your vision, courage, and integrity 
serve as an example for students and everyone here at UMGC to find their passion in life and to work hard to achieve their goals. You have already made an imprint for others to follow. And we celebrate this a very special day. We celebrate you and the entire UMGC community and offer a very, very enthusiastic congratulations. We wish you much success and personal fulfillment in your presidency and know that we look forward to all the great things you're going to accomplish. Congratulations, Brother President. We wish you all the best. Thank you, President Bro. We are now proud to share video greetings from fellow university presidents and leaders in the University System of Maryland. Congratulations to Dr. Gregory Fowler on your presidency of the University of Maryland Global Campus. I should say, uh, on behalf of my campus, UMBC, and as a Hamptonian, congratulations to you, Morehouse man. We are delighted to have you now in the University System of Maryland. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be with you on the occasion of your inauguration as president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. On behalf of the University of Maryland Baltimore, congratulations, Dr. Fowler. On behalf of the Towson University community, it is my pleasure to congratulate Dr. Fowler on his inauguration as president of University of Maryland Global Campus. Congratulations to the University of Maryland Global Campus and President Gregory Fowler on your inauguration. Best wishes from Salisbury University students, faculty, staff, and of course, Sammy the Seagull. Congratulations, President Fowler. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Frostburg State University, I congratulate Dr. Greg Fowler on becoming the seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. Our Bobcat best wishes to you. Greetings and congratulations from Bowie State University, the first HBCU in the state of Maryland, to President Gregory Fowler on your inauguration as seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. Everyone here at BSU is wishing you much, much continued success. Greg, on this auspicious occasion where we celebrate your appointment as the president of UMGC, I know I speak for all of Maryland's education community in extending warm greetings and best wishes for a successful and impactful tenure. This remarkable institution needs great leadership because its reach and impact are so great. Your amazing background and record of accomplishment make you the ideal person to lead UMGC to ever greater heights of excellence. We all stand ready to support your effort in whatever ways we can be helpful. Congratulations, best wishes, and Godspeed. University of Maryland Global Campus serves more than 90,000 students each year. Our staff and faculty reside across the United States and overseas in Europe, Asia, South Africa, and the Middle East. And our graduates hail from all 50 states and more than 20 countries and territories. In this next video, we will meet a few of them as they offer their congratulations to our new president. Benvenuto. Hello, Dr. Fowler from Team Aviano, Italy. Welcome to University of Maryland Global Campus. We're happy to have you. From all of us here in Japan, welcome to UMGC. From the largest mosque in the United Arab Emirates, welcome to UMGC family, Dr. Fowler. Welcome to UMGC, Dr. Fowler. From all of us here in Frontex, South Korea. From beautiful Rothenburg, Germany, I'd like to welcome Dr. Fowler to our UMGC team. 
Congratulations on your inauguration. Benvenuta, Dr. Fowler. Welcome to the University of Maryland Global Campus from your team in Naples, Italy. From Joint Base Andrews. The home of Air Force One. Congratulations, Congratulations Dr. Dr. Fowler, on your, your inauguration. inauguration. Welcome to UMGC, Dr. Fowler, from all of us here at the UMGC Asia Headquarters. From UMGC's newest stateside military operations location, Patrick Space Force Base on the sunny Space Coast of Florida. Congratulations, Dr. Fowler, on your inauguration, and welcome to the UMGC family. Welcome to UMGC, Dr. Fowler, from all of us here in... Wow! Congratulations! Dr. Fowler, I'm delighted and honored to bring greetings on behalf of the more than 5,000 members of the UMGC faculty worldwide. Whether we teach courses online or face-to-face -face in Maryland, or overseas on military bases in Tokyo, Japan, Kaiserslautern, Germany, or right here in Kuwait, we're excited to have you lead us as we continue to offer quality, affordable higher education to all of our students, including those brave members of the United States Armed Forces and their dependents. We are proud to stand with you, unified by the mission of transforming lives one student at a time. Congratulations. I just wanted to offer my congratulations and greetings to Dr. Fowler on behalf of the UMGC's military community. I live in Okinawa, Japan, and like many of our military students, uh, there comes a lot whenever we have to balance our work, life, and educational goals. But we can always count on UMGC to be there at every assignment and be able to help us through and pursue our educational needs. I am so pleased to speak today on behalf of UMGC's graduate and doctoral students. My UMGC education has allowed me to break through barriers and progress as an individual beyond my wildest dreams. And I am now back as a second year doctoral student. So clearly UMGC is my second home. I am so enthusiastic about the future of the university and its new president. Today is a great day for UMGC. Dr. Fowler, welcome to the University of Maryland Global Campus. And again, congratulations. On behalf of 263,000 alumni around the world, it's my honor to welcome President Gregory Fowler to University of Maryland Global Campus. The education I received at UMGC provided a springboard for my career positioning me for opportunities I would never have been considered for without my degree. A degree I could not have pursued if it weren't for the programs at UMGC tailored for working adults. We look forward to working with you to strengthen and ignite the alumni community, fostering a lifelong connection to UMGC and supporting students, helping them to achieve their educational aspirations. Congratulations and best wishes. I am delighted to be here today as a representative of more than 97,000 UMGC alumni living in Maryland. We stand with you, Dr. Fowler, as you provide leadership to an institution dedicated to providing students with affordable, open access to an immersive and quality higher education experience. UMGC has made a critically important difference in my life and career. Congratulations to Dr. Fowler, seventh president of University of Maryland Global Campus. Greetings on behalf of the members of the Overseas Marylanders Association, OMA or OMA, some 550 strong going where needed, when needed, whether it meant an isolated base in Korea or in Germany or a war zone in Vietnam or the Middle East, or in the early 1990s, teaching a distance education course to a student in Antarctica, OMA members never hesitated. And we don't hesitate today to send best wishes to you as you take over the legacy of this great institution on which the sun never sets. Greg, under your leadership, no doubt there will be new stories to tell and new history to be made. Congratulations. From members of the UMGC headquarters team in Kaiserslautern, Germany, and from members from the Germany One regional team, congratulations, congratulations Dr. Dr. Fowler. Congratulations, congratulations, Dr. Fowler. Dr. Fowler.
Congratulations, Dr. Fowler. Welcome to our UMGC family from Lisbon, Portugal. Welcome, Dr. Fowler, to UMGC from Vicenza, Italy. Congratulations. 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 Welcome to UMGC, Dr. Fowler, from all of us here in Hawaii. And congratulations in your inauguration from all of us here in Okinawa. Welcome to UMGC, Dr. Fowler. From our location in Gunsan, South Korea. Congratulations, Dr. Fowler, on your inauguration. From our headquarters here in Adelphi, Maryland. Congratulations. Dr. Fowler, we wish you many years of continued success. Thank you to all who shared greetings via video. And now it is my honor to read a special letter that we received on January 1st of this year from the President of the United States, Joe Biden. He wrote, I send my warmest congratulations as you mark the 75th anniversary of the University of Maryland Global Campus. Education is the one field that makes all others possible. We have all been shaped by educators who have sparked our curiosity, helped us find confidence, encouraged our creativity, and inspired us to build a better world. Institutions like yours not only educate our students, they shape the future. As the First Lady often says, any country that out-educates us will out-compete us. We have a responsibility to invest in America's students, educators, school staff, and the schools that help and mold and inspire our children. When we do, we invest in the prosperity, strength, and goodness of our nation. By educating and nurturing students, institutions like yours help us to produce the next generation of leaders and continue moving our nation forward in the 21st century. This letter from President Biden is the most recent of 10 that UMGC has received over our nation's leaders, I'm sorry, from our nation's leaders over a span of more than 70 years, including ones from Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Reagan, Clinton, and Obama. Images of those letters are also on display here in Adelphi today. Each is a testament to the university's mission of serving adults in the workplace and in the US military around the world. And now, to share more about our rich history, I am pleased and honored to introduce a beloved former leader of UMGC who served as a professor, chief academic officer, and interim president, Dr. Lawrence Leake, who now holds the title Administrator Emeritus in recognition of his service to the university and to all of Maryland education in a career that has spanned some five decades. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Lawrence Leake. Thank you, Blair, and welcome. I am honored to join you today and proud to be a part of this moment at a university that embraces historical moments. Whether we're teaching American troops in the jungles of Vietnam or the mountains of Afghanistan, delivering coursework using every emerging technology available, or leading efforts to offer academic degrees entirely online, we at the University of Maryland Global Campus find consistency and purpose in our mission. Our mission has evolved over decades through the efforts of dedicated university leaders, talented faculty, and committed staff members who put mission first so that each student can fulfill their educational aspirations. These outstanding men and women will forever be a part of our university's storied legacy. In 2007, Professor Sharon Hutchins, who taught at the university on three continents, said it best when capturing our university's history in her book, Beyond the Ivory Tower. Professor Hudgens said, the university grew from a single office administering a few off-campus programs around the state of Maryland to a global university with headquarters in Maryland, Germany, and Japan. During its first six years, she would go on to say, this university would serve more than two million students through courses taught 
in more than 80 countries on seven continents. As our university celebrates its 75th anniversary this year, a boundless future lies ahead. UMGC is in a sector of higher education marked by con uh, competition and consistent evolutionary change. And those institutions caught resting on their laurels are rapidly left behind. UMGC needs a leader who can harness our energy, articulate our vision, and galvanize our global university. I am confident that that leader, Dr. Greg Fowler, our new president, is that leader. When I first met Greg for the first time, eh, I'd say about 15 months ago, I was immediately impressed with his insight, his engagement, his eagerness to tackle challenges at hand, energetically and enthusiastically. He's a skilled administrator and a distinguished scholar. He has a keen sense of purpose and a passion, a deep passion for our mission. On this date, defined by destiny, Dr. Gregory Wayne Fowler is our first African-American president at an institution in a university system that boldly embraces diversity in all its forms and touches the lives of so many people of color, both here and abroad. So again, I say thank you to all who join us on this historic day as we welcome a visionary leader committed to inspiring hope and transforming the lives of every UMGC student. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leek. We turn now to learn more about Dr. Fowler and all that he brings to the university. <laughs> we are so pleased to share this video featuring Greg's colleagues, mentors, and friends. Hi, Greg, congratulations. This is a big day for you. It's a big day for the University of Maryland Global Campus as well. While I can't be there, know that me and many, many others are rooting for you. We miss you. You have an incredible legacy here at Southern New Hampshire University. You made us better. I remember when I met you for the first time that you would be a president someplace. What I didn't know then, that it would be at a university that we so much admire and respect. I've known Greg Fowler now for over 31 years. We met at Six Flags Over Georgia when we were both crew members. Greg immediately amazed me at how easily he connected with people from all walks of life and how much people respected him for his kindness and wisdom. Greg has always been someone who cared deeply about helping others succeed. He understands that education is often the key that unlocks so many opportunities in life and has dedicated his own life to helping others to reach their full potential. He was always self -mo motivated and he came to understand how very important an education was because he saw what it was doing for him. And he wanted always to pass on to others, the best of which was passed on to him. And I love that about him. I think given his background and who he is, he saw for himself and with his own family, the power of education and how it could change a life and not just an individual, a family and a community. And I think that stuck with him from the earliest days. When we first met, I was an undergrad student struggling with balance, learning and maturity. He taught me how to challenge my own thought process and how to look through a different lens. This is the thing that I most admire about you. You go out of your way to make others feel comfortable, and that's why so many people consider you their friend. Congratulations, Dr. Fowler, on your appointment as president of UMGC. You are one of my favorite people, and I remember with fondness the times we had together at Western Governors University as you helped to build that university 
Dr. Fowler is a scholar in his own right, one who is totally committed to underserved students. I was first recruited by Greg to work as a course mentor at Western Governors University back in 2006. I still remember that first dinner when you were so patient with me explaining the difference between outcomes-based education and competencies. Um, you were a, a, a trailblazer then and uh, are a trailblazer now, and I cannot be more proud of you for the accomplishments uh, in your new role. Greg's a visionary, a fierce advocate for underserved students who haven't had easy access to higher education. At the same time, he never loses sight of academic excellence while striving for student success. Greg, an accomplished scholar in his own right, in point of fact a Fulbright scholar, has chosen a more active role as one of the most thoughtful and innovative leaders in higher education today. I look forward to the exciting student-centered innovations Greg will nurture and encourage at UMGC. Greg has a firm belief that every student should have a quality education, so he comes at it thinking about what is what can this institution do for the student? Is this a good institution for the student? Are they looking after the student, not only academically, but in other ways that help them succeed? I interviewed Greg uh, in 2011. Uh, when I saw Greg's resume, I go, oh my God, you know, Fulbright Scholar, PhD, PhD, this, this, this. In all honesty, I was a little intimidated. I got the very quick impression that I think he'd be a great fit. Not only was he academically qualified, but he had an incredible emotional IQ as a down to earth guy. He's a blue collar guy uh, in his heart, but he has a white collar mind. And that's what I appreciated about him. What stands out most to me about that interview was Greg's very measured, professional, confident demeanor. Greg made it very clear to us that he had an utter commitment to ensuring that online learning was just as rigorous, just as meaningful as any face-to-face -face learning. And that commitment to uh, quality online learning was evident in every leadership decision I ever saw Greg make while he was at SNHU. For Greg, it was more about if we're going to take a student on, we're going to do everything we possibly can to support them. We won't quit on a student. I think we're we are both first generation college students and we were both of the belief uh, that, hey, a faculty member can truly make a difference in a student's life. Greg and I worked together at Southern New Hampshire University from 2012 to 2019. I would say I probably disagreed more with Greg than any colleague that I worked with at SNHU, but he did it in a way that allowed us to get to really great places as a team and obviously maintain a positive relationship. And that is a huge credit to Greg. Um, and I think it's one of, uh, one of the most important aspects of who he is and why he's successful. He, he is uh, one of the best leaders that I've been around in my career. I first heard Greg speak at an academic conference in 2014, where he was sharing his pioneering ideas on how to personalize learning. I knew right away that Greg was going to be an incredible leader. He is someone who cares deeply for students, and he wants to do everything he can to help students by expanding the reach of higher education. I've been truly inspired by his vision, passion, and execution. That, along with his big smile, will help you jump over hurdles to help. Congratulations, Greg. Best of wishes on this special day. I can't think of a more talented and dedicated person to provide leadership and guidance at UMGC. Congratulations, Greg. Greg, I, I couldn't be happier for you. And from the bottom of my heart, uh, all success in the world. Hey, bud, congratulations. You've certainly earned it. Uh, I believe that in the next several years, you're gonna make a huge impact on UMGC. Congrats, the best, and keep on trucking. They're lucky to have you, and you are lucky to have them. Greg, uh, as a colleague, uh, but now mostly as a friend, I could not be more pleased uh, for you stepping into the presidency. Uh, I will continue to follow you, your career with great interest. I know you're gonna make, uh, continue to make incredible changes in higher ed. Greg, congratulations again. I'm a Greg Fowler fan through and through. Greg, congratulations, and thank you for making the university, our campuses, our communities, and our countries smarter and more caring. I would certainly take this opportunity
to congratulate him on all of his achievements and the fact that he has arrived in a position to continue to influence the well-being of others. My very best wishes to you. Congratulations. And now we come to the portion of our inaugural celebration known as the Investiture. In this symbolic ceremony, leaders of the University System of Maryland will conduct the official installation and welcome our university president. It is my great honor to welcome one of our university's most distinguished graduates and the chair of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents, Ms. Linda Gooden. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. As the chair of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents, I'm honored to be here today as we celebrate this wonderful occasion. I'm also pleased to bring greetings from my fellow regents and from so many members of the University System of Maryland family as we formally install Gregory W. Fowler as the seventh president of the University of Maryland Global Campus. The name itself, University of Maryland Global Campus says so much. UMGC is the nation's largest online public university. UMGC is also the world leader in online education with more than 180 locations in more than 20 countries throughout the world. And yet, even as it stands as a global force, UMGC is incredibly personal. For 75 years, UMGC has been committed to meeting students where they are. Members of the armed forces serving overseas and their families, working adults across the country, community college students, whoever you are, UMGC is there for you. And today, more than ever, UMGC is also meeting students how they learn, a robust and engaging fully online experience, face-to-face -face instruction, or a hybrid of the two. However you want to learn, UMGC is there for you. As someone with two earned degrees from UMGC, as well as one honorary degree, I can attest to how important UMGC's commitment and flexibility are. I can also attest that Greg Fowler is uniquely suited to build upon UMGC's impressive 75-year legacy and lift this institution to even greater heights. He is a nationally recognized scholar. He is an acknowledged leader in developing innovative learning models. And as a senior leader at Western Governors University and president at Southern New Hampshire's University Global Campus, he has served non-traditional students in non-traditional ways at two of the largest universities in America. And while his tenure as president at UMUGC has been relatively brief and extremely challenging, President Fowler's vision and leadership have been on full display. UMGC has expanded partnerships domestically and internationally with educational institutions, governments, and businesses. I can't wait to see what he can do when this pandemic is behind us. I'm confident that the future for President Fowler and UMGC are bright. I now ask University System of Maryland Chancellor Jay Perman and Dr. Gregory Fowler to join me on stage for the official investiture ceremony. Dr. Fowler, by the power vested in the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland, I am pleased to install you as President of the University of Maryland Global Campus with all the rights, privileges, and obligations pertaining to the Chief Executive. Dr. Fowler, as a symbol of your office, Chancellor Perman will present you with the UMGC Presidential Chain of Office.
Chancellor Perman, I now ask you to deliver the charge to President Fowler. Well, congratulations, President Fowler. <laughs> For me, it's uh, truly an honor and a privilege to be here today and to give you the sacred charge of the office in front of these witnesses, your colleagues, your friends, your family. Dr. Gregory W. Fowler, I hereby charge you to be the pioneer that this pioneering institution deserves. I charge you to help us fundamentally change the way higher education works and how all of us work within it. I charge you to reframe who we serve and how we serve them and to reimagine what education and access look like in the 21st century. I charge you to meet your students where they are, literally and metaphorically, and to give them the support and flexibility and opportunities they need to get where they want to go. I charge you to keep globalizing higher education to remind us always of the power education has to foster understanding, to forge connections, and to find common ground. Now more than ever, we see the humanitarian impact of our scholarship and our service. I charge you to work for access equity, and fairness in everything you do so that this great university is open to all and benefits all and cultivates equally the enormous talent that resides here. I charge you to value the contributions of your students, your faculty, staff, and alumni recognizing that this institution's future and the future you're creating for higher education writ large are dependent upon the voices, the vision, and the passion of your people. I charge you to advocate for the learners who have placed their faith and their trust in this university and in you. I charge you to grow UMGC's prominence, expand its reach, amplify its impact, strengthen its leadership. These are weighty responsibilities, I know. But through it all, you will persevere. And through it all, the University System of Maryland will work as your partner, your backer, and your ally. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to present to you Dr. Gregory W. Fowler, President of the University of Maryland Global Campus. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Perman and Board Chair Gooden. And to all of you here and watching via live stream, just welcome. Thank you so much. I am both proud and humbled to speak to you today as president of University of Maryland Global Campus, an institution dedicated from the outset to meeting students where they are and responding to their needs. It is a special honor to welcome my colleagues who are presidents of other universities. 
They embody the diversity of purpose in higher education and remind us of its breadth of impact from providing an environment where young adults can learn and come of age to expanding the frontiers of knowledge through research to shaping a safe and supportive haven for historically advantaged populations to grow and achieve. At the same time, I am saddened to note that many of our colleagues and friends, particularly those overseas, are now living under the shadow of war as the crisis in Ukraine grounds on. Some are themselves in harm's way, while others endure the singular pain that comes with knowing that family members and friends are in danger, their lives disrupted. Our thoughts and our prayers are with them. Here today, I feel especially blessed that so many of my family members have been able to join, in case you couldn't hear them. <laughs> my family has played a formative role in my life, shaping the way that I view the world and the way I see my own role and objectives here at University of Maryland Global Campus. I get my love of education from my mother, who for years, for, for years drove 45 minutes each way down South Georgia Rose to teach elementary school and also served as my Sunday school teacher. <laughs> I'm not sure which one she'd say was harder. <laughs> I learned the value of service from my father, who often took me with him as he visited church members around the city. They, their commitment to service has always been a recurring theme in our lives. He and my oldest brother, Junior, are both military veterans, and others of my siblings have worked as pastors, teachers, and public servants. My brother, Michael, who appeared on the cover of Time magazine at the height of the pandemic, <laughs> is a mortician and coroner in Doherty County, Georgia, and used his position to help track the spread of the virus, drive awareness, and encourage community health measures to limit the spread. While many associate coroners with death, Mike expanded his mission to include saving as many lives as possible with community programs to reduce drownings and drug overdoses, a perfect example of how one life can impact so many others. Of course, my brothers and sisters also helped teach me humility, <laughs> whether I liked it or not, <laughs> by never letting me forget where I come from and standing ready to remind me of my shortcomings. <laughs> I'm sure some of them are standing there now. <laughs> Joking aside, my belief in the power of love, of laughter, and of perseverance is rooted in my relationship with my family. And again, it informs the way I view higher education and this university's mission. Because of my own background and the relationship I have with my family, I see myself in the courage and determination of our students. And I recognize how the right support can change lives for generations to come. My sister Sabrina, for instance. <laughs> Led by example and paved the way for many of us, first graduating from college, then moving from Albany to Atlanta, where her apartment became home for me and several of my siblings over the years as we pursued our college degrees. Here at UMGC, when I look at our portfolio of offerings in health professions, biotechnology, cybersecurity, and many more that members of my own family attained, and I see how it has changed their destinies, I am compelled to make those same opportunities available to as many others as possible. And hardly a day goes by when I'm not reminded of something my brother Vernon said to me when he was teaching me how to bowl. After one particularly offensive gutter ball, he looked at me and he said, that ball went right where you threw it. <laughs> Over the years, when my efforts have failed to produce the desired results that I've wanted, I come back to that simple observation and the wisdom behind it. It has helped me to grow, reflect on lessons learned, and ultimately to strive always to be better today than I was yesterday. Of course, we are all more than the sum of our experiences, but it is equally true that my experiences continue to shape the way I work and I lead. As a college student working at the Six Flags theme park, I learned the power of coordinated teams, of considering the user experience, and of treating your customers as guests in your home. Working for the National Endowment for the Humanities taught me the value of bringing new voices into our conversations and how to empower underserved populations. These experiences combined inspired me to explore the art of the possible and motivated me to accept the role here at UMGC, 
aligned with a mission that has guided this university for more than 75 years. Here at UMGC, the tradition of flexibility and agility and of meeting students where they are is rooted in our DNA. As former President Gerald Heger noted in 1999 in his forward to UMGC's official history, from its inception, this institution has been student-centered in every sense of that phrase. Few institutions can boast such a colorful record of working with students in the most unusual and often adverse conditions. That student-centeredness remains at the heart of UMGC today. We are committed to rethinking the university to provide a new level of service to the dedicated students in the UMGC community. In 1949, as NATO was established, and as deployments to Europe increased in support of the Berlin airlift, the Department of Defense sent out a directive inviting institutions to offer courses in Europe. Only one institution responded. The University of Maryland, of, the University of Maryland College of Special and Continuing Studies, precursor to what is now UMGC. Meeting students where they are meant finding seven faculty members willing to fly to post-war Germany with one week's notice. As time went on, it meant being the first to venture into a war zone to teach American troops in Vietnam in 1963, and being the first Maryland University to desegregate. Our teams were in the Philippines when Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991. They were on Guam in 1992 when the island was hit by five hurricanes and an earthquake, and classes continued to meet, even when that meant using flashlights. UMGC was at the forefront of the online revolution in higher education, piloting online classes in 1994 and among the first to offer degree programs fully online. Similarly, in 2015, we replaced publisher textbooks with digital resources in most of our courses at no cost to students, saving them an estimated $17 million in the first year alone. Risks are easily, risks are easily managed in hindsight. And it is worth noting that UMGC has been guided by the needs and objectives of students even when the outcomes were far from certain. In Germany in 1949, university leaders appointed history professor David Sparks ad hoc program administrator. He went on to work with the understanding that if fewer than 300 students registered for classes, he was to shutter the program and send everyone home. More than 1,800 enrolled in the first two weeks alone. And the program recorded more than 9,500 enrollments that first year, growing to almost 35,000 a decade later. Online education was uncharted territory as well when UMGC piloted its first course in 1994. Distance education was nothing new. The university had offered courses by mail, radio, teleconference, and even voicemail for years. However, few foresaw the overwhelming response to online instruction. Within three years, when the first web-based course was offered, the university recorded 3,800 individual enrollments. A decade later, that number had grown to more than 177,000. These successes hinged on our willingness to be bold, to learn from failures, accept change, and step forward into new and sometimes uncomfortable circumstances. Today, our challenge turns on meeting students' needs by designing new learning experiences that align with their goals and objectives and that rest on a foundation of service and support that is unprecedented and perhaps unexpected in higher education, one that is easily accessible 24-7 across multiple platforms. Historically, education is operated as something of a black box. Learners signed up, they paid their tuition and fees, and immersed themselves in a learning experience without always a clear understanding of what they could expect to receive in return. We have told students repeatedly and convincingly that they needed to go to college. And even that their long-term success was contingent on earning a degree. We have not always been as clear about what came in that one-size-fits-all package that we call a degree. In response to the growing chorus of voices asking, is college worth it, we will work to ensure that our more traditional programs use plain terms to define the knowledge, skills, and abilities a student will gain and how those skills and abilities tie to the career and civic aspirations of each learner. We will accept accountability for our results, partnering with students in the learning journey, measuring our successes in terms of their success, and leveraging resources to ensure that we know what, that they know and we know what they came here for, and that they get what they promise, we promised them when they enrolled in the first place. In a post-pandemic world where many are rethinking their priorities, we will evaluate our assumptions and adjust our strategies. Those who are part of the great resignation will need new skills. 
and they will not be willing to drop everything to attend classes full time and face to face. Again, this is familiar territory for UMGC. As my predecessor, President Gerald Hager wrote, in our definition of university, there are no Ivy League covered buildings, no gated green lawns, no four year long interruptions in the life of a student. Most important, no barrier separates education from people's everyday lives. We envision the university as a lifelong resource, enabling people to continue improving their skills, sharpening their minds, and achieving their goals, all while they continue to work, participate in their communities, and enjoy their families. He said that more than 20 years ago, and it remains true today. To meet students where they are, we must truly listen to them and respond by creating new learning experiences rapidly and responsively that do not compromise on quality. At the same time, we will increase our corporate and community partnerships and bring their voices and needs to the design sessions. We will leverage those partnerships in turn, looking at partner organizations as, as assets that bring special expertise, added bandwidth, and scalability that further our ability to fulfill our mission. Even before the pandemic struck, there were some 40 million Americans with some college and no degree. Many of those students have been to three, four, or five different institutions, and all they have to show for it is debt and the reinforced belief that they are not college material. Yet our own statistics reveal that students typically fail or drop out, not because they cannot comprehend or master the course content, but because life happens. This attrition is both tragic and preventable. Today's technologies allow us to monitor student, faculty, and staff behaviors and progress at granular levels that were unimaginable just a few decades ago. We can and must use that capacity to identify those students most in need and wrap them in a cocoon of support. Another 40 million, another 40 million adults in America have no credentialed post-secondary learning experiences in a global economy that is going to increasingly demand it. Again, these are the students that we must find new ways to help succeed. And if we only operate in traditional ways, we can only expect to get traditional results. UMGC's history has taught us that there will always be another disruptor, another pandemic, another volcanic eruption, another tsunami, another global conflict. While we cannot predict the future, we can and must do better at future-proofing our institution and its ability to meet students where they are by creating learning experiences that are designed from the start to be of high academic quality, engaging, personalized, and time and space agnostic. With 180 locations around the world, we are fully committed to building on our long history of service to the U.S. military, leveraging the advantages offered by our global footprint and using our presence in these communities to reach the civilian populations as well who can benefit from learning experiences that we are developing. At the core of every surging river, every breaking wave is a single drop of water. We will work to create those rivers of change and those waves of progress by transforming lives one learner at a time. This is how we've transformed the lives and families of more than 300,000 UMGC graduates. That is how we will affect change for even more moving forward. We can never know what circumstance, disability, or neglect has concealed a transcendent mind. Another Stephen Hawking, Helen Keller, Stevie Wonder, or Ludwig von, Ludwig von, Be Ludwig von Beethoven. Try to say that real fast. <laughs> Poised to change or illuminate the world. What we must know is that we must help those whose voices have been heard the least, who the status quo has too often left isolated or homebound, unseen or unheard. It may well be the single mother or father struggling to provide, or the soldier in a war zone who dreams of making a new life for her or his loved ones at home. These are the lives we can change. From the first, UMGC has said, here I am, send me. And we are called to do that once again. The challenge before us today is not related to a new learning modality, but new learning experiences. A portion of our population needs full degree programs and term length courses, but even more need new skills in short bursts over periods of time as they change jobs or acclimate to them. Others need trustworthy institutions to evaluate and certify the learning they have acquired from life experience outside the classroom. 
Similarly, businesses need partners who can rapidly design and develop experiences that upskill employees in alignment with the demands of a competitive, technical, and ever-changing workforce. To succeed, we must collaborate with these businesses to ensure that the workforce is competitive, partnering with community organizations to support more than the academic needs of each learner, supporting their civic needs and personal aspirations as well. We must have the courage to stop reinventing the wheel and instead build a launch pad for spaceships. A few weeks ago, I read an article in the Washington Post that described how seemingly small obstacles are in reality almost insurmountable for many of the learners we are committed to helping. How expenses like daycare, small utility bills, or even the cost of a single bus ticket can derail hopes and dreams. Since the pandemic started, UMGC has distributed more than $620,000 to students in need through its Student Aid Fund for Emergency Relief, our SAFER program. And since its inception, the Pillars of Strength Scholarship Fund, which supports the volunteer caregivers of injured, wounded, or ill service members, has awarded full scholarships to 51 caregivers and dispersed more than $700,000 in tuition and fees. This is in addition to our normal scholarship programs, some $15 million annually, and the way we allocate those funds reflects our commitment to empowering students who have been traditionally underserved or whose voices have not been heard. I am touched and deeply touched and grateful to all who've contributed to the Inauguration Scholarship Fund in my honor, already totaling some more than $175,000 that will go to support students who find themselves facing these types of challenges. So I wanna say thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us to continue finding ways to help them. For that, I applaud you. And we dare not rest on our laurels. Just as the higher education industry and landscape changes, just as the American military continues to evolve, so too must the ways in which we serve our various populations. Make no mistake, we will proudly maintain our identity as a public Maryland institution and our focus on serving Marylanders. Partnering with our sister and brother institutions in the university system of Maryland and with businesses operating here to serve students in every corner of the state regardless of their proximity to a traditional campus, and ultimately to ensure that Maryland has a skilled and competitive workforce needed to, su to support our dynamic economy. This is what we mean when we talk about affordability and accessibility, when we talk about transforming lives, as you have heard here today. My life is a testimony that in transforming lives, we transform families. And if we can transform families, we can transform communities. If we can transform communities, we can transform nations. And if we can transform nations, we can transform the world. As Nelson Mandela said, education truly is our greatest weapon for transformation. And I would add, our greatest hope for transformation as well. Thank you for your support, for the opportunity to lead this remarkable institution and for your shared belief in the power of education to transform lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's get to work. Thank you, President Fowler. We close our program today on a high note with a special performance from a singer whose rich and melodic sound has graced national platforms. Please give a big round of applause for Capriya McLaren performing Never Give Up. that can change the world trapped inside an ordinary girl she looks just like me too afraid to dream out loud 
And though it's simple, your idea, it won't make sense to everybody. You need courage now if you're going to persevere to fulfill divine purpose. You got to answer when you're called. So don't be afraid to face the world against all odds. Keep the dream alive, don't let it die. If something deep inside keeps inspiring you to try, don't stop and never give up. Don't ever give up on you don't give up every victory comes in time work today to change tomorrow it gets easier who's to say that you can't fly and every step you take, you get closer to your destination. You'll need courage now if you're going to persevere to fulfill divine purpose. You got to answer when you're called. So don't be afraid to face the world against all odds keep the dream alive don't let it die if something deep inside keeps inspiring you to try don't stop and never give up don't ever give up on you don't give Sometimes it gets rough, but you got to keep moving. You got to keep the faith. Bring what's deep inside your heart to the light. And never give up. Don't ever give up on you. Oh, who holds the pieces to complete the puzzle? The answer that can solve a mystery. The key that can unlock your understanding. It's all inside of you. You have everything you need. And so keep the dream alive. Never give up, don't ever give up on you. Sometimes life can place a stumbling block in your way, but you gotta keep the faith. Bring what's deep inside your heart to the light and never give up, don't ever give up. Thank you, Capria, and congratulations to President Fowler. 
It is certainly a day to remember for University of Maryland Global Campus. For all in attendance here in Maryland and those watching online around the world, will the audience please rise for the academic recession. We ask that you remain at your seats until the recession has concluded. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. 